Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and today I would be talking about endoscopic pituitary surgery. So you would probably be wondering why am I talking about pituitary surgery? It's a neurosurgeon's domain. Yes, but with the advances in the field of endoscopic surgery, we have a new specialty that has come up which is called as endoscopic skull base surgery. So with the advent of endoscopic skull base surgery, we can kind of reach the base of the skull through the nasal corridor that is with the help of an endoscope. So something that was being done transcranially in the earlier days through an open approach, now we can kind of minimize the morbidity associated with those open procedures by going endonasally. So you go endoscopically. Now, and reach the base of the skull, expose the entire area where the pituitary tumor is and then subsequently remove the tumor. Now, when you look at endoscopic skull base surgery, we have a team that is involved. So ideally, we have an endocrinologist, we have a neurosurgeon and we have a ENT surgeon with uh, expertise in the field of endoscopic skull base surgery. Now, these patients present with various symptoms from pressure symptoms like headache, visual disturbances to hormonal disturbances. So many of these uh, tumors, they present with problems like obesity. Uh, they can have issues related to patients, issues related to infertility. So these are generally worked up in detail by the endocrinologist. Subsequently, scans are done to identify the type of tumor. Now, some of these tumors can be managed medically. Now, some of these tumors require surgical options. And subsequently, these patients are referred to a neurosurgeon and then a neurosurgical and the endoscopy team takes a call, plans a surgery, and the surgery is done by both these surgeons at the same time. So you have basically two surgeons operating at the same time. So that's the beauty of endoscopic skull base surgery, the, to highlight the effort of teamwork there. And so the endoscopic surgeon kind of opens up the way, all the way to the pituitary fossa, or the location of the pituitary tumor, and subsequently the neurosurgeon removes or delivers the tumor from this pituitary fossa and finally the defect that is created is kind of sealed or closed up by the ENT surgeon and subsequently in the post-operative period again the endocrinologist comes into play so the endocrinologist will manage the kind of hormonal disturbances the supplementation what has to be given these are carried out by the endocrinology team the electrolyte imbalances have to be corrected so these patients can have uh, variations in urine output and so on similarly you have neurosurgical issues which are taken care of by the neurosurgery colleague and again issues pertaining to the nasal cavity which are dealt by the ENT team. So you have a team working all around in a patient with these kind of tumors. So that is how this specialty has evolved and that is how endoscopic skull based surgery is more or less the standard of care when it comes to pituitary tumor these days. So if you see more than 95% of these patients or pituitary tumors can be dealt with endoscopically and the indications for an open approach are almost very very minimal and I would say far and few. Thank you.